imagine it's Friday and the CFO asks you to add a new hire to the HR plan and to synchronize it with all the new hires recently onboarded and to determine any variances from plan to actual. Well, instead of panicking because the HR system doesn't talk with the planning system, I'll just tell them the results will be ready in a few minutes. Let's look how Workday would accomplish the headcount reconciliation of a workforce plan to the HR system with automation and increased visibility across the platform. Here I am logged into Workday um, as Logan McNeil, VP of HR. Here she can measure how she's executing on that plan. But first, we need to update the plan. So let's go ahead and update the plan. As you can see here, she's taken to our workforce supply dashboard, uh, concentrating on the help desk, IT help desk department. That's where we're going to add that new hire. So far, we have eight uh, either filled or open positions. We can see the cost of that workforce and how we're comparing to target. In the middle here, we do have our uh, employee list where we can uh, manage that and uh, create that new record. Also, we can, you know, if we want to understand more about any role or person, we can right click and drill into those details. And this allows us to see the HR information. Here's Jeff Gordon, his baseball card, if you will, of his details. Um, granted, what access I can see is available here. And maybe I even want to see his org structure and the team that he's on uh, and how that rolls up to the bigger organization. All that's available to me, something I use every day at Workday myself uh, to better understand what's going on. But, you know, that that's how tight this is, right? The roster comes from the HR system, and I can obviously then view and see some details that just aren't available in a normal planning system. And then below that roster there is a, a incredible way to uh, understand the variances from the actuals to the plan. So in this case, we can see that uh, a couple of our hires uh, did start later than we anticipated or than we planned for, I should say. So that affects the plan. And three of them were actually hired at a higher rate than the plan called for. And the current market conditions may justify that, but it also helps us explain our variances. So let's go ahead and add that new hire that was requested. So I'll go to sheets in my current workers. And as I bring it up, it's, it's again for the help desk department. It's my eight uh, records that are out there positions. What I'll do is just duplicate one of these. So I'll copy a row. As I do that, I need to delete this position ID. That's a unique identifier that's created in uh, Workday HR. I'll uh, just give them this title as well. And as I scroll across, they're in San Francisco, as you can see here. Um, and that's what I want. But I need a new start date of 1 10 2022 and maybe a, a, a onboarding date of. Uh, uh, February 7th, 2022, whoops, 2022, and I'll save that record. Now I've updated the plan as was asked. It's that easy, but the, the challenge a lot of times is not updating the plan, but syncing it with the actuals that are occurring in the HR system. How are we recruiting? Who, what roles have been fulfilled? Which ones are still open? All that, right? And that's a manual, typically uh, heavy effort to reconcile. Well, we have a uh, way to sync that up. So you can see my record up here, no position ID. So let's go ahead and create that position ID. First thing I want to do is just um, focus on that one uh, date there. So we'll uh, go to Dece uh, January 10th and OK that. And now we can publish this into HR and have it create a record for me. So here's that IT help desk specialist. And here is the... Uh, magic, if you will, of us being able to create a workforce action, in this case, create that position in Workday HR. So once I view that published plan, what we'll see here is it's running. It's right now submitting that record to HR. And as it does that, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, uh, see it in HR and update it. So now we're taken into Workday HR as Logan McNeil, so we could uh, better understand the uh, business process framework that's created to help set up this employee or this position, I should say. Now that record's completed. So what we can do as the HR VP of HR is uh, use that business process uh, framework to create that IT specialist role. Looks like I have a couple of them out here. So let's go ahead and 
initiate that process. Here we can see it created two position IDs, 815 and 816. Now let's go to our home screen and better understand what we just did. So here we're back at the Workforce Supply uh, tab. We have eight records here only because we're still in fiscal 21. But if I were to navigate this to uh, January 22, we have nine because of that new hire started later in the year. And we have that record 815 here. So we've tied that to our, our role. And now we have that unique identifier throughout the system. So just a little bit of idea of uh, being able to quickly execute on changes to the HR plan, uh, tie that into the recruiting and HR systems, and to look at the deltas and variances that may be uh, result as we uh, hire individuals for that plan. Thank you, and we look forward to the opportunity to discuss these kinds of possibilities with you.